This vlog is sponsored by Adidas, the sporting brand. I'm joking, it's not really sponsored by Adidas. But if Adidas want to contribute some money towards my extensive fuel bill, thank you. Welcome back to another Focus RS vlog. It's not much of a vlog these days, I've been away for a bit um, and I haven't been able to do a video for a while. But I'm back now for a few days uh, before I shoot off again. But there really is no excuse. Uh, I mean, I, I, it's a vlog. I'm supposed to be doing recording videos about what I'm doing and the experience of this car. And um, I just, I mean, I could give you a load of excuses as to why I haven't done a vlog in ages. So I will. While I've been busy, I've been busy with the business. I've been to London for a few days. I was on holiday in Italy. I got a call from Lewis Hamilton recently asking if I could help him learn his lines on the Hockham Hind circuit. So I had to spend a bit of time with Lewis. Had to have my hair done. Got a call from Justin Bieber. Said, can you do that song with me that we've been talking about for ages? I said, look, Justin, just really busy. You know, Justin, Justin, we could do something special together, but just really busy, mate. Can't do it right now. I also had to go to Australia because I, I was in a shark wrestling competition and that took quite a bit of my time up. I was getting my nails done the other day as well. They're looking really good. It took me ages though. I had to spend some time with a girlfriend as well. She was moaning, saying, oh, there you are thinking you're some hotshot YouTuber with your little fans. You think people love you and know you and they don't really know you or love you. Thanks for that, love. Anyway, I could come up with excuses all day long. Now, what I wanted to do today is have a little bit of a chat about my experience with this car now that I've had it for just over three months. And it's gone very quick. Three, quick, three very quick months. So your initial impression is completely different to what it's like to live with on a day-to-day -day basis. And so I thought it'd be quite good today to just do a three month roundup of how I feel about the car now, if anybody cares. For those of you that don't care, I've decided I think the best thing would be to do a really quick, let's just overtake this van. Oh yeah, never get bored of that. I thought I'd do a really quick um, summary of my feelings about the car. And then you can watch the rest of the video if you want, which is me just going on, blah, 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 blah. So, now because, the, because a lot of the people who seem to comment on my videos are from all over the world, which is great, and I'm really thankful for everybody who comments and everybody who subscribes to my channel. Love you all. So, in respect of the international viewers of my videos, I thought what I'd do is a quick summary in various languages that I can speak just to give a quick summary of what I think of this car. And then you can watch the rest of it afterwards if you really want to know the nitty gritty. So I thought we'd start with English. This is a rather splendid automobile. It's so refined and so fast. I just love it. I think you should buy one. Oh yes. And now in American. Oh my god, this car is so freaking awesome. Yeah, dude. And now in French. Oh, oh, oh. je t'aime beaucoup, mon focus. Oh, 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 oh. c'est formidable. And finally, in Italian. Questa macchina è bella. Bella, bella, bella. Te chiamo, te chiamo. Right, well, I think that should have uh, reduced my subscriber count by half, as I've offended half the population of the world. The point of this video is to talk about three months ownership with this car. What's it been like? Well, when I first got it, I think the, the ex that you did have that initial excitement, don't you? Oh, you know, this was a, such a hyped car and everything, so you have to live up to that hype as well. That's a big ask for any car. That's a big ask. They always say, don't drive your dream car. And so when I picked this car up, 
I mean, just seeing the car, just seeing, especially in this bright blue color, you know, when you see the car, you just, there's something, there's something special about it. There's just something special about the RS. And that specialness is still there. I arrived from London yesterday. I was in London for a few days and I arrived back. And when I went to pick up my car from the, from the airport, seeing it again was like oh my baby my baby <laughs> it's so weird i never really had that with any car before this car is not perfect it's nearly perfect but it's not perfect and i don't think any car is ever perfect i can't think of one car that i've had i got oh that is an absolutely perfect car maybe apart from a vw golf but then i think it's a bit understated so that in that respect it's not perfect either i don't want my cars to be perfect i like to feel like i'm actually driving it as well i like to feel that that i have to do something to get the most out of the car and in this car because it grips so well and it's got so much power you don't really need to do anything you could just zoom around and enjoy the the speed of the car but actually, to get the most of it, you do have to have a bit of bravery and um, really push it a bit. And it rewards you for that pushing. I'm really enjoying this car. And every time I just, whenever I see it parked outside my house and I go and I unlock it, when I get in, when I start the engine, the smell of the car, the sound of the car, all of it's still there. Three months later, I still, it's, I still get a big smile on my face when I see the car and when I drive it and it still gets loads of attention. People keep looking at it, they stop. I seem to have so many conversations about this car with so many people. It's just, there's something just gets you by the short and curlies. And then you get to a roundabout and you can boot it, look. Whoa. <laughs> it feels, I mean, that's the thing, right? Roundabout there, it probably doesn't come across in the camera, right? We're just flooring it on the roundabout. It feels like a rear wheel drive car. And that's amazing. When you get that sensation that the back end is, is sli sliding out. I mean, you, it's a Ford Focus hatchback. It shouldn't be feeling rear wheel drive, but it really does feel rear wheel drive. And there's something, you know, this isn't just a normal four wheel drive car. And I think that's the big difference. There's, there's some people on some um, Subaru forum stuff and they slate the car because of this now the other whatever but at the end of the day this isn't a normal four-wheel drive car it does things that it shouldn't be able to do and that's what makes it so much fun you know here's another roundabout and when i floor it around this roundabout and i feel the back end pushing out look oh, jesus <laughs> brilliant and the thing is this is i mean this car i'm not obsessed with this car in terms of like keeping it clean and bleh. no it's my daily car so it's dirty there's there's bottle empty bottles of water crisp not at the moment because it's it's been clean but you know normally there's stuff in the car because i use it all the time i take the kids to school i do the shopping in it like we go to the beach in it, it gets full of sand and i use it all the time all the time this has to be one of the best cars for sale in the world today i could put furniture in the car put all fold all the seats down they all fall completely flat take the kids to school do my shopping go to work and go to a track day and have immense fun and be competitive There's not a lot of cars you can say that about and i think this is why this car is just that bit special because it does things that other cars just can't do. There are a few things that are actually bothering me with it. One is, I've got, no, I've got a Samsung Galaxy S7, which is a slightly larger phone than normal, and I've got nowhere to put it. It goes in the drinks holder because the slot here in the dashboard is too small for the phone. Okay, it's not the end of the world. I put it here in between the seats. It's fine. It's just not ideal. You would think this day and age, any modern car would be able to fit a big phone. No. There's one major gripe that I've got with this car though, and it's nothing that anybody has ever mentioned at all. It's really bothering me. 
And you might think it's a bit silly. The biggest problem I've got is the dashboard. And I know some people don't like the design of it and they don't like the vents or whatever. That doesn't bother me. I, I, I don't really care about that. What I do care about is the fact that it's highly reflective. The top part of this dashboard is highly reflective. So when I'm driving along, if the sun is up there, which in Spain it often is, I get a terrible glare off the dashboard. And I don't think I've ever had that in another car. And it's just because it seems it's so flat, the dashboard's so flat, that, and, and especially there's an area to the right here that um, seems to be some sort of plasticky material, which is a shiny material. And so when the sun is up there, I get a terrible, terrible glare on the dashboard and it actually hurts my eyes. I think it's a bit of a design flaw, really. I was trying to think, I mean, all the years I had my, my Golf, for example, and my Golf GTI, I, I never had that. But it was a different sort of shape of dashboard and it was a different material. It was a more sort of... Excuse me. It's clearing some cars. So good. So yeah, I think it's just design the dashboard. I think on the Golf it was much more curved. It was like a more grey, matte grey colour, which didn't seem to reflect anything. But this, there's some hard plastics over there, which are really bothering me. Can I live with it? Yes. Just means I'm going to wear my, my sunglasses a lot when I'm driving. That's all. But I wear them anyway. So yeah, I mean it's just something that no one's mentioned before, but it really bothers me here in Spain because we get a lot of sun and it, it does hurt my eyes sometimes, especially when I'm, slight, if I'm a little bit tired, particularly, um, it does really bother me. The other thing, <laughs> which actually, is it such a problem? I don't know. I mean, I, I hate to moan because, I mean, there's always things you don't like, a big fault to anything. But the other thing that sort of bothers me a little bit and just a little bit, this isn't a major one really. It's just that it's these seats. So I've got the what they call the shell seats, and they've got these side bolsters which are very high. And at first it takes a bit of getting used to to get in and out of the car comfortably. But what happens is that because I use this every day, and I mean I'm in and out of here 10, 20 times a day, after a while, that bolster hurts the inside of your leg because you sort of there's a bit there's a I'll, I'll try and catch it on camera in a minute but I'll there's a little bit of like where it dips and that's where your leg fits into as you're getting into the car and it presses on the inside of your thigh um, and it's okay at first it's just that repeatedly doof, 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 all those knocks on a daily basis, uh, after a while, it starts to really hurt. Right, so the bit I'm referring to is this bit here. And when you get in and out, your sort of your leg sort of goes there. This is going to get very worn. You can probably see it's starting to get worn already. I'll try and demonstrate me getting in and out. Oh, so when I get in, there's. Oh. What a lovely view. But as you can see there, my leg gets stuck in there and this bit here starts digging into my leg. And that's the bit as you move on it, you go over. But that's the bit. Oh my God, it's very hot. That's the bit that, that hurts the leg, just there. Because your legs are wedges in there. I don't know whether it's because I've got a fat thigh or that's just how it is. But yeah, it sort of just start hurting after a while, that's all. So should I have chosen the other seats instead of the shell seats? No, I love these seats. I love these seats. I'm prepared to put up with a bit of pain for them. So yeah, the dashboard may be a bit shiny and the seat hurts my leg. Who cares? This is the most fun car I've ever owned. Catch you next time. Promise I will do a video sooner than three or four weeks. <laughs> I've got another one coming very shortly. Hope you enjoyed the video anyway and um, catch you soon.